So hi guys, this is Kaori Nagao, your Las Vegas lifestyle specialist. Today we have a very、uh, exciting interview with my fellow UC Riverside alumni, Ian Wardle from Northwestern Mutual. How are you, Ian? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good, good. It's、uh, it's a little cloudy in Newport Beach behind you today, or? You know it is. It'll but it'll burn off though. It's burning off right now, and and you'll see some planes flying by. We're right here next to the airport. I know. I just saw one go before before we started. That's so cool.、Uh, so read your bio to introduce everyone to you, and then yeah, I have some, a couple of questions for you. Yeah. So thank you so much for making the time today. Absolutely. So first of all, yeah, read Ian's、uh, bio here. As a financial advisor, Ian and his team help. His clients make sense of a complex financial world and create a plan to achieve their most important financial goals now and in the future. Ian is a California native and moved to Newport Beach in 2014 after graduating from UC Riverside to begin his financial planning practice with Northwestern Mutual. He has been expanding his business and providing world-class financial services to his clients nationally. Ian plan- takes pride in taking a team approach to his clients' planning, utilizing company specialists. Partners at his firms, along with relationships he has built in the community, CPAs and, and estate planning attorneys, to meet clients' unique needs. Ian got into his business of financial services after seeing his family lose a prized vacation home in Laguna Beach, California. This home had been in his family for generations, and is where he spent most of his summers growing up. It was a staple in his family and is a gathering place for holidays and birthdays. Had there been a plan? In place, in place, things would have been much different. Ian says, "This impactful life event drives Ian each and every day to ensure his clients and others in the community to have a financial plan, so that they don't have to lose their own version of the Laguna Beach house." Ian currently resides in Laguna Beach and enjoys snowboarding, surfing, golfing, working out, and being active in the community. In addition to running his financial business, Ian works with local nonprofits and the Orange County education system, teaching. Retirement finances class to the local community. Ian specializes in providing strategic, comprehensive advice to help successful attorneys, business owners, as well as the next generation of millennial business leaders to meet their financial goals. He also often collaborates with fellow advisors to educate clients on wealth management strategies and solutions. In addition to helping his own clients thrive, Ian thrives to positively impact individuals across the country by educating them on the importance of financial planning. Building a healthy relationship with money and effectively planning for their future. So, welcome, Ian. How? Oh my、Thank、gosh, what、so、a great bio! <laughs> you nailed it. You nailed yeah. it. Yeah. So, I guess、uh, first of all, we met through LinkedIn. So, let's talk about that. You know,、um, mm-hmm. how did you find me? How did you reach out to me? Yeah. No. Good question. So, I would say, you know, LinkedIn has been a big additive. You know, or way that I've built my business here in Orange County. I went to UC Riverside. I've been I built my business here for the past eight years. So, really, this is the only thing I've ever known in terms of employ employment wise or career wise.、Um, but I would attribute LinkedIn and my alumni network to where I am today. And I would say, with respect to LinkedIn, you know, how I found you was I simply just used the tools available on LinkedIn, the Sales Navigator search, and. Searched other UC, you know, Riverside alumni in California and the surrounding states,、um, but that's how I've been able to really get connected to a lot of alumni and other centers of influence that have helped me build build the practice. That's amazing, and I, I absolutely love that. And you know, I need to obviously, you know, kind of looking at what you've done already, leveraging the UCR alumni network. That's something I definitely wanted to, you know, it, you know, kind of. Look at what you've done on that marketing side and implement it into my business. And I think that's a great way to connect, and it's an immediate、mm-hmm. connection too, right, Ian? When you're obviously reaching out to these alumni. Exactly. Yeah, and it's it's totally an immediate connection. I feel like just even if you're an entrepreneur, an investor, a salesperson,、um, or even just you know somebody who's not in those roles, right? Not in the sales, not an entrepreneur role, who's more of just you know employee at a, at a company. You know,、um, just even just having that. Initial just connection, you know, just through going to the same college and being able to talk about the the restaurants or the classes that you had, you know, it's just that in you know initial break of the ice has been really helpful with just、um, you know having conversations. Amazing. What would you say your percentage of the business with the、uh, UC alumni, you know, networks for you? Yeah, you know, good question. I would say at this point it's probably more forty percent, but initially、okay. when I started out it was closer to eighty. Wow.、Um, 
just because it's more been a function of, you know, we do work with UCR alums, but then they've referred us to family and friends kind of a thing where those people have really started to, to dilute the practice, and if you will, in the sense yeah. of alumni that we that we continue to work with. But, yeah. you know, really a, a, a lion's share of the practice is UCR alums. That's you know? amazing. I love that. And you're currently involved in the Alumni Association too, Ian? I am now. Yeah. So that's been really cool just to be integrated in that more just on a professional level. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, haven't been in it too long, but um, it's been really unique and, and, and fun. You know? Yeah. So in your bio, obviously you mentioned about your Laguna Beach house. So obviously, you know, I think yeah. our audience and myself, I want to hear a little bit more detail about that. And that obviously inspires you to help these, cl help your clients, right? With their financial stability. Mm hmm yeah, and you know, candidly, this was not a business that I even was looking at. You know, yeah. back in the day, I thought I was going to be doing what you were doing. I was going to do real estate. That was kind of my whole mindset and goal until a friend introduced me to this business. And it has a lot of the same attributes as being in real estate, kind of my own boss, have unlimited right. income potential, get to help others. So um, I just kind of fell into this business. But I think everything all in my life, now that I look back on it, has happened for me, not to me. And everything's kind of been, you know, laid out for me in the way that the universe was supposed to lay it out for me. You know what I mean? I'm, I just, I'm very, now I've become more spiritual and I believe kind of in a higher power that <laughs> things like have happened for a reason, you know, of course. Um, yep. and that Laguna beach situation really did happen for a reason. I mean, it wasn't, um, it was a huge bummer back in the day, right. When that happened. But I think that really just gave me access at a young age to, to see what, um, you know, it was, is possible, you know, mm -hmm. with life, just being around more fluent people. And I didn't come from an affluent background at all. This, we just had access to this place just through family, you know? So um, it really kind of gave me access to references of success and like what my life could be like if I worked hard. And, and as a byproduct of us losing this place, it really kind of made me think about, well, hey, you know, how was my family set up for, for, you know, their, their, their financial futures with regards to their wealth planning. And so that's kind of now after losing that, it's really given me a strong belief and conviction to help others in the community, not have to go with what my family had to go through, you mm -hmm. know, and, and make sure that they have a sound, not only retirement plan, but a sound investment and just wealth building plan, you know, that aligns with their goals and what that means for them. I love yeah. that. I love that. Obviously, if you have something personal, right? And yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I've always been a believe, believer of laws of attraction. Good people attract good people. Everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, we met, and there's obviously a reason for that. And you're on my right. interview today, right? And you know, I, I think, you know, when I first asked you if you were interested, you're like, wow, I've never done this before, but you know, <laughs> you're open to it, right? So I absolutely love that about you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank yeah, you. yeah. Have you used LinkedIn to build your network at all? Or I mean, have you, yes. is this, you have? Yes. Yeah, so before real estate, and I only just started real estate, it's actually going to be my uh, one year anniversary in two weeks, end of May. So I'm really oh, excited yeah. about that and just kind well, of, you know, celebrating. Thank you. Um, <laughs> as they say, only 20% of those that take the real estate exams, right, you know, continue past the first year. So I'm one of them. And I'll continue to be that, you know, that small percent as, as we move up, you know, in the career. But mm -hmm. before uh, real estate, I was in uh, corporate events and luxury concierge services. So right. I absolutely leveraged LinkedIn. I had that professional service as well, where I could reach out to potential clients uh, on the corporate side, especially on the corporate side. You know, we were working with a lot of tech companies. Just, you know, obviously, because I moved here from L.A., you know, I had a lot of L.A. friends in the entertainment industry. That was kind of who we were catering to. So I'm, I'm with you as far as leveraging, you know, your friends, your, you know, college network first into your business and then kind of diluting from there and growing from mm -hmm. there. So yeah, when I, I think, first, yeah, I was going to say, I, I feel like you're like a perfect fit for your role now. You know, I, mean? I think like all, everything that has happened from what you told me from your career has like led up to this point of now yes. you being where you're at, you know, with the connections that you have. Yes. Um, and I think that's why just connections in general are just so powerful. You know? Yes, absolutely. I mean, networking is key. And I mean, I'm on LinkedIn every day, you know, wishing everybody happy birthday, wishing congratulations for work anniversaries. I mean, just keeping in yeah. touch keeping in touch. And, you know, I, I love it that LinkedIn has some of these, you know, more social aspects now, right? Like the posts and the stories, like they didn't have that before, but now they're incorporating that, 
you know, mm-hmm. similar to Facebook and Instagram. So um, right. are you on all the, all the platforms, Ian, or which, which platforms do you use the most? Just LinkedIn? You know what? I could be totally better at that. <laughs> LinkedIn is probably my main, my main platform that I'm using right now. Um, mm-hmm. We, we are on Facebook just to use it from like an, a Facebook ads perspective, you know, okay. account to, to be able to run certain advertisements and things like that. But, yeah. um, but, you know, I could do better and I could learn from you, which is why awesome. I want to talk to you. Awesome. Too. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, let's talk YouTube. So I just launched my YouTube channel last December and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, everyone told me it's obviously, you know, a, a, a long investment it's not like you know it just the thing doesn't happen overnight you know mm-hmm. from one subscribers to 10 subscribers you know 10,000 subscribers right so I currently have I think about 275 subscribers uh you know and I, I heard that it's going to be like at least a year until you get more of that traction but what I have seen from my other YouTube content creator in my industry is that from 500 to a thousand and then from a mm-hmm. thousand to up 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 that exponential growth is very significant. Right. But for me, you know, I'm at 275. I want to get to that 500 subscriber hurdle. And then from there, I think the timeline for me to get from 500 to 1,000 would be much smaller time frame compared to what I've been kind of, you know, building till this day. So I'm really excited about it. I mean, for me, you know, content creating, obviously being in Vegas, having that background with concierge services. I've been selling Vegas as a city for the mm-hmm. last 16 years here. You know, I have content at my fingertips, right? And especially when there's like new casinos opening, like the resorts world this summer. I mean, there's so much to talk about. Oh, yeah. So, it's a great yeah. market. Yeah. 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 So I focus more on the Las Vegas lifestyle. What's it really like to live, you know, here off the strip? Like everyone thinks, oh, you live in Vegas and they think about the strip and they're like, no, 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 I live in Vegas. It's like a suburb, right? There's more so, to it. Yeah. Than more just- to it. More to it. And there's so much, like so much to do off the strip now. I don't know if you've actually ventured out, Ian, off the strip. You know, I haven't. I okay. have. But I'm going to watch you. I'm going to, but I've seen some of the stuff on your YouTube channel. I'm like, no way. Like this like exists. Like, you yeah. know. Exactly. And, you know, obviously for me, you know, I'm a, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I've got my two daughters, like, I want to showcase what it's like to raise your family here, too. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, the cost of living here compared to California is much, much more significantly lower. So I'm telling all my girlfriends in LA, especially in Irvine, to come move out here, <laughs> you know, hang out with me, you know, cost of living, you could afford so much, like your dollar goes so much more here, right? Yeah. But, uh, but YouTube is fantastic, because people get to relate with you. And I'm so excited that people could see you like in person, Ian, on this interview with me and really get to know you as a person. And so mm-hmm. when they do want to talk to you about financial planning, when they want to reach out to you, they already know who you are. So you're already surpassing that kind of that timeline of uh, trust and building that relationship. Right. And so they'll be like, yeah, I saw you on this, this video and this video. And like they, they'll know so much more about me that like it's a, it's again it's like it's just like the alumni you know relationship that we have with our UCA Riverside um you know alums they have that instant connection with you right. and I absolutely love it you know some people are like oh my gosh like you know and again I tell people where, I, where I'm from where I went to school so people will be like oh I went to UC Riverside too or yeah I live I'm from LA you know obviously a lot of people from LA are moving here or just people that are like oh I've been to Japan you know like your city like you know that's amazing that you were born and raised there right. So all of those, you know, factors go such a long way. And I've been, I've been able to actually get leads for my YouTube channel. So I'm really, really happy about that. That's super exciting. Cause I feel like it's like an indirect way of like, so they get to see, they have a, a little tip into Carrie's life. You know what I mean? Right. Where they can right. see that you have a dog. They can see that you have kids and like, oh my gosh, like they can instantly relate. I think that's just right. so powerful. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so tell us about all your hobbies. Oh my goodness. You so- surf, you golf. What don't yeah. you do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I sur- surfing is my main hobby. I surf uh-huh. multiple times a week, just inherently just living, living by the beach. I grew up, you know, surfing all the time when I was younger, but I uh, played a lot of golf when I was younger. I was in the high school golf team. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Didn't play college golf or anything, but um, played a lot of golf back, back in the day. And I still, I still do. My, my grandfather introduced me to it. Um, and then my family just been a big skiing family, snowboarding awesome. family. So spent a lot of younger years going up to Mammoth and some of the California resorts, awesome. you know, doing that. So awesome. Have you golfed here in Vegas yet? You know what? I have not golfed in Vegas. Oh, I can't my believe it. But I've heard yes. like courses are insane. Like my friends, a couple of my friends are actually professional golfers. And so I always see Oh, it. nice. 
yeah, you'll have to come out with, with them. I mean, we've got so many golf courses, but I have one right by you know my house. I live in Southern Highlands and we have one of the best golf courses, the Southern Highlands golf course here. And, mm -hmm. you know, Perfect. people from all over town, you know, would drive here to the Southwest side of town to golf here. So uh, golfing is on my list this year. I definitely want to start taking uh, classes. And uh, yeah. obviously it's a, it's a long, it's a, it's a long, you know, you know, it's not like a short, you know, activity, right? It's like a long four hour. There's a learning curve. Commitment, yeah. right? But yeah, learning yeah, curve learning for curve. sure. And yeah, you have to maybe give me some tips on uh, how to, uh, how to hold the, <laughs> hold the club. Like it's, it's from like the holding, the posture, everything, right? It is. Yeah. yeah. And another thing, did you know that you could go skiing and snowboarding here in Vegas? What? Yes. I'm just so, I need, okay, I need to come to Vegas now. Like you totally sold me on it. <laughs> I need to go. So, I, I had no idea. So it's like an indoor type of a deal. No, it's actually outdoors. We have a mountain just an hour away from the strip called Mount Charleston. And we have legit oh, okay. snow. Oh, okay. Yeah, heard of that. Okay. Yeah. So we have snowboarding, skiing, and then for the kids, they have tubing. You know, you can rent those tubes and go down the mountain. So much fun. So obviously this oh, year God. was closed, but last year we did with the family and it was so much fun. And, you know, my, my daughters and my nephews, we absolutely love going to the mountain all the time. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And is your, is your, so is your, um, are your kids involved in any like activities around yes. Vegas or, or yes. extracurricular? A absolutely. So my oldest is indoor swimming and okay. that's all back to normal here. You know, I mean, you know, the, the, the teachers have the, the plastic shields over their faces for, for, for instructors, but you know, they've got to keep doing that safety protocols. Right. But actually we're actually hundred percent mask free in Vegas. Now, I don't know if you heard that news, but we're going back to 100% uh, back to normal um, as of June 1st. So okay, so it's June 1st. Right. I knew it was sometime around now. I just wasn't sure if it was next week or, yeah, early June. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's June awesome. June 1st. And so, I mean, everything's opening up, you know, and I think a lot of people from California or neighboring states, they're just kind of, your restrictions are much more stricter than here. So everyone would just drive in, fly in every weekend. And we're seeing a lot of our, you know, the, the back to normal crowd, you know, the Californians coming back mm -hmm. to Vegas, so. We absolutely love that. And then my youngest does gymnastics. She's okay. uh, absolutely super talented. She just, start, she just started doing the competition as well. Uh, but my nephews, they do soccer. They used to do t-ball. There's just so much activities here that, yeah. you know, a lot of people are like, oh, it's too hot. Well, we've got indoor soccer too, like in the, in the summer and then outdoor, you know, in the fall, springtime. But uh, lots to do. And again, you know, we've got our Vegas Golden Knights. So we have um, ice hockey is really, really popular among the young youngsters. So they'll mm -hmm. go basically take ice skating classes. There's figure stick skating classes available at the practice arenas that we have here. Oh, very cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We what are some of the yeah. communities that are opening? Like what are, if I'm, if I'm going to move into Vegas, like what yeah. communities should I be looking at? Just, oh, community neighborhoods. Absolutely. I know it's so, predicated on pricing and things like that too. Yeah. But. Yeah. Are you familiar with any of the neighborhoods here? Like, have you heard of like, you know, Summerland or Henderson? No, but like so, just some, if I was to come out and move to Vegas, like, is there any particular neighborhood that you would guide me towards that's just more geared towards families and, yeah. and kids? Yeah. And Absolutely. So I would say top three would be Summerlin is the largest master plan community. It's on the Northwest side of town. So okay. if you like hiking, there's Red Rock Canyon just minutes away. That's great for, you know, all the schools, activities, dining, all the retail shopping centers. So there's actually a large outdoor mall called Downtown Summerlin. So you don't have to go on the strip to shop. You could do everything off the strip. And oh, a lot wow. of people don't know about that. But, you know, there's obviously shopping retail off the strip as well. So that's mm -hmm. one master plan community. Number and what two. What are the price range in that community or what's just like a ballpark, you know? Yeah. So looking. median price right now, Ian, is 375000 Okay. For a single family home. And oh, that's wow. our median price. So again, it goes from there, right? And then mm -hmm. Summerlin, Summerlin be more of the luxury kind of community. I would say, you know, definitely 400,000 400, and up starting. But again, you could find a beautiful single family home with a pool in the mid 500s. Wow. You don't have to go and spend over a million dollars. Right. With an FHA loan, you know, or, you know, first time, I mean, you, you know, this sounds like there's a lot of options for every yes. different type of family, you know? Yes. And there's so many beautiful programs right now, as you know, like the first time home buyer program, we have a lot of Nevada uh, programs called Nevada is possible. They're really encouraging first time home buyers and they'll cover, you know, almost your whole down payment. Wow. So there's a lot of programs out there. So again, you know, for those of you watching, and if you're not familiar with the down payment 
program assistance, you know, please comment yeah. below, reach out to me, let me know. Um, yeah, there's just so much opportunities now and a lot of people just don't know about it. So that's one of, one of the things I do all the time on my social media, educate, mm -hmm. educate, right? Like let people know what's going on, what your clients are doing, what programs they're benefiting from. And right. these pro programs aren't going anywhere. So in the low interest rate environment that we're in now too, I mean, the, the things are lower, you know, on, on the mortgages. And so yes. I think it's a very favorable time to, to lock in, you know, a, a 30 year rate. Absolutely. So I would say Summerlin is like one of the most famous master plan communities, Ian, okay. like everyone talks about it because it's one of the largest. It just takes pretty much all of the northwest side of Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, but Henderson is a city right adjacent to Las Vegas. Okay. Also very easy to get to the strip. It's like less than 20 minutes on the freeway. Okay. That's more very family oriented. It's also a mature neighborhood. It's also very easy access to Lake Mead and Lake Las Vegas. So we have lakes here, <laughs> for those of you that didn't know, for water sports. So not really surfing, but we've got boating right. and, you know, water activities and stuff like that. But you could do the wake surfing behind the boat. That's still, I mean, people do that. I've seen that. Yep. That looks really fun. That looks pretty fun. Yeah. And <laughs> then obviously number three, you know, I live in this community. So I'm like the biggest promoter, the advocate for Southern Highlands. So I've lived here in this community for about 12 years. And we're located on the southwest side of town. So we're the first master plan community off the 15 freeway coming from L.A. So if you're driving up L.A., you know, the 15 freeway, you, we're going to be the first community exit off of the Southern Highlands Parkway exit. So, again, you know, because I have so many friends from L.A. that would drive in, they love mm -hmm. it that we're like the first community and they don't have to drive an additional 20 to 30 minutes to get to Summerlin yeah. on the northwest side of town. I can but uh, great, you know, great schools really great like parks and outdoor hiking areas here which I obviously enjoy every morning with my my pet Roxy and <laughs> uh, you know we don't have as many dining and shopping experiences in Southern Highlands but we're still so close to like the you know our closest outdoor uh, retail shopping center is Town Square so that's like 10 minutes away and then okay. the strip is 10 minutes away you know, and again, Summerlin is like just on the freeway 20 minutes away. So everything's really close by. And that's, that's one of the, you know, the pros about living in Vegas, Ian, like the no traffic. You know, I remember sitting bumper to bumper on the 10 freeway, yeah. 405 freeway, not going anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Is it still pretty bad? Oh, yeah. I mean, well, during the COVID times, there was like, I mean, it was open, it was open, yeah. you know what I mean? But now it's everybody's getting back to normal, like you said you know, the mask, the mask situation is, is, you know, diminishing. So people are getting vaccinated. So right. yeah, everybody's right. back on the road, you know, so. Yeah. 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 So talk to us more about your, uh, your services and like, how big yeah. is your team? Like talk about kind of like your business side. So right now we have a team of three. So I have my main staff partner. I have somebody who helps me with my marketing and an investment operations team member. Nice. Um, and then I also have a partner of mine who has been in the business for about 15 years, who he and I, so at my firm, you know what I mean? I have access, each of each advisor here at our firm has their own business in a sense. Mm -hmm. so I have my own business, I have my own payroll, et cetera. But then we have other partners at our firm, kind of like a law firm where we can bring in specialists, right? For different situations or, mm -hmm. you know, we're working with complex business owner situations or real estate, you know, people who have, you know, um, big real estate portfolios, or even just normal households, just families, you know, that just have more complex tax situations and things like that. We're able to bring in other parties to really help with our clients planning. So wonderful. we do full wealth management planning. So we help clients manage money. Right. And then we also do um, insurance planning as well. So we believe a strong, sound financial plan well, isn't really a plan without a strong defense, mm -hmm. meaning we help clients with life insurance, disability insurance, long-term care. So if anything happens, right, the whole other financial plan that we work so hard to build, all the assets don't just dismantle because of a sickness or a premature injury. So right. we're really big fans of building in investments, in insurance, in real estate and retirement accounts into the context of a financial plan to help Wonderful. clients make the best decisions possible. Wonderful. And you have a lot of uh, entrepreneurs as your, as your clients, you mentioned? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, just a lot more millennials. I would say a lot of our entrepreneurial clients are more of, well, we have some older ones as well, but a lot of our clients that are entrepreneurial like are, are more millennials. 
Um, yeah. You know, the late 30s, late 20s. Yep, yeah, 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 yeah. Talk to us about that because obviously those are my clients too. And it's so interesting because their behavior is not the same as, you know, all the other older clientele that I have, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of my millennials, they don't want to buy, they want to rent. And they're okay with spending 5000 10000 15000 mm-hmm. per month on rent here right. in Vegas, which is significantly high, right? On the super right. high scale, you know, where our average rent is maybe less than 2000 a month. Right, right. And, and for those clients, you know, for entrepreneurs, et cetera, I mean, it just depends on where they're at in life. But some of them, I mean, right now there's a big opportunity. If they're paying five, 10 grand a month for rent, you know, they could be paying the same in a mortgage and building an asset, which they can then rent out or 1035 exchange into something else, you know, or 1031 exchange into something else later yeah. or moving yep. to another property. Yeah. Um, but we're seeing a ton of our entrepreneur clients buy things, not only as just an asset class to have, just to own real estate as a form of an investment, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, but we are seeing some of our clients still rent, you know, the ones that are single that just want yeah. to really buy a home, but yeah, um, exactly. It's a little bit of a combination, you know, but I think it's a fantastic time to, to purchase. Wonderful. And do you think there's more and more of these millennial entrepreneurs like growing in your kind of mar- market as oh, far absolutely. as like the clients? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. Especially down here being within proximity to LA and just, you know, the boom of social media and YouTube. I mean, it's, it's so easy. Well, I shouldn't say easy. Right. But I think we have a big leg up on some of the, you know, baby boomers that are right. further down the road who didn't have these, these new methods of building a business and marketing, of course. you know, of course, are a lot of your clients in the entertainment industry just because of where you are? No, you know, not really. Not um, really. Okay. I do a lot of work with you know, business owners and then more attorneys, um, you know, families, dual income households who, who are yeah. affluent um, and, you know, real estate professionals, I would say kind of okay. make, in, in positions to kind of make up the clientele, but really yeah, not, not too many entertainment clients. Gotcha. Gotcha. So like who, who would you be, who do you want to, what kind of audience do you want to network more with Ian? And obviously this is a great opportunity to like let, you know, our, our audience know, right? Like who do you want to network with more? Like what's kind of like your marketing strategy for the next three, three months or for the year? Like what's kind of like your angle? Like, is there a certain like market you really want to tap into or an industry um, you want to tap into? You obviously continue to do the UC Riverside, you know, alumni relationship building, but right. yeah. Do you have a certain like kind of strategy for the next few months? strategy in terms of how we're marketing you mean in terms of how we're marketing or just the clientele that we want to get in both front of? yeah both i would say we really do well in the attorney space and working with business owners and physicians okay. those are i would say those and we really like to stick with what we do well you know not being kind of a jack of all trades i mean these are just these three niches if you will or these three types of clients that we really feel like we can we can provide a lot of value for not to say there's other or even real estate professionals, successful real estate professionals is, is somebody also or a different clientele we also can provide a ton of value for. But, you know, versus spreading out and kind of being doing everything and being able to serve everybody, even though we want that's what we do. And we want to help as many people as we can. Right. We want to serve the people that we can really provide a lot of value for mm-hmm. um, within the scope of just our, our team. You know, and those are the types of clients. Right. Um, but I think where we're really trying to expand is working with more baby boomers and people that are in their fifties, early sixties that are kind of approaching retirement. Mm-hmm. Um, they may not have a, may not have a plan, you know, that may right. have real estate that they've acquired or, you know, businesses that they're trying to sell, or they want to transition a business to, you know, their, their kids or, you know, create more of a succession plan. Mm-hmm. Like those are really some of the more complex um cases that we're working on where we involve CPAs and estate planning attorneys to really wow. kind of look out for all the um, all the the leakage we call it leakage in our business where there's just little things here and there that if we can just improve on you know this one tax idea or this one estate planning right. idea with setting up right. a trust this way we can create a lot of value um, mm-hmm. for clients and peace of mind ultimately that's what yeah we- do, so. Yeah, I, I love how you're targeted, like you have your niche and you want to focus on that. And that's, you know, my strategy too. like, you don't want to be jack of all trades, you want to focus and specialize. I think that's really important. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about who, market- who would you say that you, I was going to ask you too, like, who do, who do you, who you say is really the type of person that you enjoy working with or really is that target client? 
Yeah. So, you know, I work for a luxury broker brokerage. So a lot of, you know, my clients would think that I only work with luxury, like properties and real estate, but that's not true. I work with everyone. You know, it's obviously my year one. So I've been really just kind of leveraging my relationship, you know, with my past kind of my, with my past career, you know, all my corporate luxury concierge clients that I used to take care of with Las Vegas. I already have an existing database. So that's who I would constantly market. And obviously, you know, they're on my social media as well. So those are the people I'm talking to every day. But at the same time, I really enjoy helping first time home buyers. And, you know, whether it's, you know, a, a single mom, that I just closed a couple months ago, where it was actually her first in her generation, her whole family, she was the first home a first time home buyer. Oh, wow. And that That's just cool. meant so much. And then her daughter, I met with her because she came to all the showings. She's the same age as my oldest daughter. And like I just really connected with them. And that just really inspired me and my heart. And I was like, I want to continue to help these first time home buyers. It's about educating, right? And yeah. letting people know that real estate is going to help you build wealth. You know, this, you, you know, you don't want to keep renting and just paying and building assets for your landlord. You want to do it for yourself. Right. And especially now with all these programs, it makes it easier for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, my focus, obviously, you know, just really leveraging because, you know, my UC Riverside, UCLA, my California network, I would say is definitely. And like my, my ultimate goal, I think I mentioned this earlier, is like having all my friends move out here. I mean, that would be great, right? You know, having <laughs> yeah. home. I mean, they visit here so often. It just makes sense for them to just buy a second home. Like, why not? Some of my friends. Exactly. <laughs> so a lot of them are doing that, especially now you can work from, you know, work remotely. They don't have to be in the different cities in LA. So um, that's that. And then, you know, with my brokerage, you know, we do focus on high rise high rises on and off the strip. So we have one Queens Ridge uh, place, which is a luxury high rise condominium. Um, and then also Sky Las Vegas, which is right on the strip, right next to the new new hotel that's going to be open called Resorts World. Okay. So we're really kind of focusing on the high rise clientele, which is again, very different from the single family, you know, family driven uh, clientele. So for me, like my first year, Ian, I'm just kind of getting my feet wet. I'm doing rentals as well, which I'll continue to do because again, those are people that are, you know, relocating, for example, from LA or where have you, they mm -hmm. want to rent first to see what Vegas lifestyle is like, and then make a decision where they want to buy. Do they want to buy in Summerlin? Do they want to buy in Henderson? Do they want to like Good live point. in my neighborhood, you know, and kind of figure mm -hmm. out. But, um, but again, it's all, you know, for me, it's about educating, you know, especially, you know, first time home buyers. I think that that just means so much. They have a special place in my heart. So I want to continue doing that. And then, you know, I'm also working on 1031 exchanges. So I know you mentioned that, you know, earlier, but that's a whole new, you know, kind of mentality, timeline, different, mm -hmm. you know, things that we need to look at coming from an investor perspective. So, right. yeah, really just getting myself wrapped around in the whole real estate aspect is what ha I have been doing and will Very continue to do as I learn. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of opportunity, especially from LA and from these other surrounding, you know, like San Francisco to move to to just tax friendly states, you know, yes, yes. Um, yes. I feel like there's a lot of opportunity for investors out there in your area, too. Absolutely. Yeah. And a lot we see a lot of movement from California to Texas as well. They have no state income tax like us, but I always remind yeah. them, remind all my clients. But you know what? Vegas offers a lot more than Texas and Vegas <laughs> offers, you know, less property taxes. And like, obviously, you know, my, my job is to sell Vegas and I've been doing it for 16 years. So I'm pretty much a natural at that. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, we're the city of entertainment, you know, and uh, everything's coming back now, Ian, which makes it so like amazing because we're going to come back so strong. Right. Than ever. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been hit the, the strongest too with unemployment as well. Seriously. Yeah, so Seriously. can't wait for everything to come back and can't wait for you to come visit us. I know. I mean, geez, around. like now I'm like totally sold. Like I feel like I'm going to buy like a house after this. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. No, but seriously, I'm like just having a conversation talking to you offline obviously about this. Like it just really opened my eyes to, wow, like with clients that do want to move to more tax-friendly environments, right? Like Vegas would really be more, more of an option than I wouldn't even have, well, I would have considered it obviously for them or advised them say, hey, here's some tax friendly states. But now knowing how, how more family friendly, family friendly it is, 
Yeah. Even if I am a single bachelor, the options for high rise and the condominiums. I mean, there's so oh, many yeah. options for every type of demographic. Oh yeah. my gosh, you would totally love the high rise lifestyle here, Ian. Oh my gosh, you're like walking distance from like the strip, you know, and uh, you've got entertainment right there in front of you. And it's a great, it's the amenities are like resort like amenities and that obviously course. like, you know, rethinking because I had an apartment off the strip, but rethinking if I had known the different amenities and the lifestyle that I could get as a high rise resident, I mean, if I was single, I would be there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. She is. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Well, any last remarks before we end our, uh, our interview today? Yeah. Again, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. You know, love to continue to stay in touch and obviously can't wait for you, guys, for you to come back here. Yeah. You know, um, I would just say, you know, closing remarks would just be, you know, work with a trusted professional, you know, whether it's real estate, whether it's finances, whether it's taxes, whether it's health, you know, I think um, LinkedIn, you know, has allowed us to connect not only with each other, but it's allowed me to obviously, you know, connect with other tax professionals or even like dentists came from LinkedIn. So I think like just leveraging LinkedIn and some of the social media platforms to really connect with other trusted professionals in your, in your in your area it's just really let you know can, can really lead a lot of really cool opportunities and or you just find somebody you really like working with you know so absolutely absolutely how much time do you spend on linkedin last question a week no, or a day um i try to limit it to like an hour a day now <laughs> to an hour a day now my team also helps look at my my account and just kind of make sure there's nothing dropping through the cracks but okay um, i try to spend as much time as i can you know being present with clients and Awesome. And can we expect a YouTube channel from you in the near future? Yeah, you know, that's what we're working that we're working on that right now. So amazing. Amazing. Uh, well, can't to wait to, you know, catch up with you maybe six months from now or so. Like when you have your YouTube channel, I want to hear all about it and yeah. like, you know, the the steps and the challenges and all that good stuff, you know, launching a YouTube channel with you. Yeah, and I think being vulnerable and even just doing it, like how you know how we're doing it right now and just being yeah. ourselves, I think that's just really what it's about. And people are attracted to that, you know, so. Well, thank you so much, Ian. So great to chat with you. Can't wait to have you in Vegas. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for more content and uh, let's stay in touch. All right, Gary. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye. Bye.